Now, if you hit the comma key and you go to your tools and you say, let's go ahead that demo soldier here. You're going to see all of his subtools are orange. You're going to see colorize is turned off for all of them. Just like when we were going through and doing subtool organization where it's like, oh, okay, I just want to look at the shirt. So I tap alt and then I hold down shift and touch the eyeball to turn all the other subtools off. And then I can tap the eyeball here and then the backpack and the shoulder guard and I can just look at these three. And I can hold down shift and turn all the eyeballs off again, or I can choose another object here and turn on sh hold down shift and turn on all the eyeballs. Same thing applies to colorize. If you want to hold down shift and turn on the brush, it'll turn on colorize for all of your subtools. So now even though we have orange selected, it's not colorizing any of the objects. If you hold down shift and turn off this paintbrush, it'll turn off colorize for everything else. Now what you can do is if we alt tap the shirt, so we want to paint on the shirt and we want to paint the shirt red. So of course we're going to have RGB turned on and we start painting. Let's go ahead and change it back to a dot stroke, no alpha. So we're painting red on the shirt and then we move. You're going to see now the shirt has its default white vertices and we're painting red on it. If we want to go into solo mode, we can. And we can change it to a different color. We can paint blue. However, you're going to see that no matter what color I pick, it's all the other subtools are going to inherit that color because this shirt is the only one who had its color eyes turned on when I started painting on it. Now, if I hold down shift and turn on uh, the paintbrush is going to turn off the paintbrush because I had it selected, but if I hold down shift and turn it back on, it's going to turn on colorize for everything, and now you're seeing the default white value. However, if I hold down shift and turn off colorize, go to white here, you're going to see if colorize is on, they're all the same color of white. If colorize is off, you're going to see these actually turn a darker gray. So while you're sculpting and selecting subtools, it's a little bit easier to have colorize turned off because you can see that these are dimmed. In fact, if you go up here to Preferences, Edit, there's a Masked Object Dimming. If you hold down Control, that'll tell you, actually, that's a Masked Object Dimming, so while you're masking, that's how dim it's going to make it. Also, Inactive Subtool Dimming is what I meant to bring up. So if the uh, subtool is inactive, it's going to be a 0.75% or 75% of this color. So if you Alt-Tap this one, now this one's brighter and these are all darker, so you can change that value in the Preferences if you want. But I wanted to bring that up in case you accidentally had colorize turned on for your subtools and you didn't realize it. That that's why when I select the arm or the body, it doesn't look like I have it selected because it is it is selected, but it's the same color as everything else. If I tap these goggles, it's still going to stay the same color. Now we're not going to get real heavy into materials, but I just want to bring this up while we're talking about it. Um, if you turn on M and you change, uh, right, right now, if you have M selected, you can, let's go into solo mode here. Uh, we have, well, let's alt tap the shirt again. So with the shirt selected here, right now we have matte cap gray. If we change that to like chrome bright, it's going to change everything to chrome. If we change it to sketch shader, it's going to change everything to the sketch shader. If you wanted to retain this material, you have M selected. You can go to color, fill object, and now this entire material has been assigned to all these vertices. So if I change this now to matte cap green, nothing's going to change because colorized is turned on and I have a material assigned. If I turn colorize off, then it's just going to inherit the default color, so green, matte cap green clay, or I can change it back to white. But if I turn colorize back on, it's going to be the sketch shader that I had signed. So if I want to, I can go here to like Chrome B, choose purple or magenta, and now I can paint M. Well, if I paint with just M, it's just going to paint the chrome material. If I do MRGB, it's going to paint the chrome material with pink color. Let's do something a little more obvious. Chrome bright with pink. There we go. Or if I want to, I can go to MRGB intensity with a intensity of 100 and go to color fill object and now I'm going to fill it with that material and that color. If I want to I can change to RGB and now I can just paint with RGB color so I can paint with purple and blue and I'm just painting the RGB values the material underneath is staying the same. If you want to unassign a material what you can do is you can go to the flat color with M selected go to color fill object and then choose another like choose basic material and you're going to see now the material, essentially when you assign a flat color to all the vertices, it negates everything. So now I have the functionality to go back in and just start cycling through my materials and see which one I want. And then if I want to change this to poly skin, I can go to color, fill object with material selected, and now it's filled with that material. So to kind of bring this all together, let's go ahead and grab that head that we were working on. I'm going to go here to my materials. And actually, that's something else I should mention. If we go back to the vest here and go out of solo mode, um, let's alt tap the shoulder pad. Let's go to matcap skeleton. Let's go to color, fill object with material assign. Let's tap his body. Let's go to another material, chrome A, color, fill object. So now we have three different materials on this 
on this person. So again, if I hold down, if I tap C over a color, it's going to inherit that color underneath the cursor. Uh, if you also drag out from from your color onto your object, that's going to pick a color as well. So it's like you can see a color picker, and you can do that in the interface too. So you can pick the ZBrush orange or the gray or whatever. You can also do that with materials. Just click on the material over here and then drag out, and now you can you can pick this material that's assigned. You can pick bone and you can pick chrome. But to go back to the head here, let's go down here to our standard materials. Let's choose skin shader four. Let's choose something vaguely skin tone. We're going to go to MRGB. We're going to go to color, fill object. Switch this over to RGB. We'll drop our RGB intensity down. We'll have X turned on. We'll change this to a spray, or I guess a color spray. And we'll go in here with maybe some golden zone stuff here. We can change it to a slightly bluish for the neck here, and then we can just hit C to sample this, and then we can kind of brush that in a little bit. We can get a little bit more ruddy, a little bit more red through the nose here, and again, you can tap C to sample this. Let's switch from a spray stroke to a dot stroke. Tap S to make our draw size smaller, change our focal shift back to zero. We can get a little bit more detail, so let's put some eyebrows on here. So I'm going to go to a darker brown. Go through here and we can put in some eyebrows here. Now again, it's only going to be able to to give you enough resolution based on the underlying geometry. So if we turn on polyframe, you see this isn't super high res. If you want more geometry, you can dynamesh at a higher resolution. You can use Sculptures Pro, which we went over to make this resolution higher. You can Z-remesh and project, which we'll get to a later, and subdivide to get more information here. If we want to clean up this eyebrow, we can tap C to sample this color. And then we can just paint here. And we'll also get into later uh, bringing up Spotlight. You can paint through Spotlight. You can paint textures. So you can grab a texture out of here. You can grab this texture here, and you can actually paint with this texture. You can change this to drag rect, and you can paint this texture on there. You can go to Texture Import, bring in your own images. You can hit the comma key, go up here to Textures. You can bring in these. And again, we'll get, we'll get more in-depth in this later. This is, again, just super, super basic stuff. So again, you can hit C here. You can go through here. We can... Turn the texture off, go back to a dot stroke here, and darken this up. Now, if you want to, you can change it back to a white color. You can go through here. Actually, we'll start with a darker kind of grayish, and we'll kind of paint in that color. In fact, let's change it from a skin shader to a toy plastic. That's going to be a very shiny material. We'll turn on MRGB, make it a darker gray, and right where this eyeball is, we'll go ahead and paint this in. So this will be a little bit shinier. Now, You'll notice that when we're poly painting, it has a nice soft fall off. When we come to materials, it is basically just on or off. So it's either a face is filled with the material or it's not. So that's a little bit different. So we can paint toy plastic in this area. We'll change back to RGB, make this a little whiter color. We'll go ahead and make this a little lighter. We'll go to a darker color here, say a dark blue. And again, you can still use masking. So if you want to, you can mask, hold down control with your mask pin, and you can mask this area out. You can control tap to invert that. If the mask is kind of getting in the way or you don't want to see it temporarily, go to your masking menu here, turn off view mask. And now it looks the same, but the mask is still there. You just don't see it. And then you can go through here and you can paint. Let's grab a black, put in a pupil. Let's get a little bit of a lighter blue here. And we'll go ahead and just control drag to unmask everything. Now, of course, we would usually have a different subtool there with a material assigned. We're now not quite there yet. Again, just super basics. But hopefully that gets you a pretty good overview of basic poly painting and basic material assignment. One super quick addendum to poly painting that I want to make is it's okay. So we have our brush set up. We have RGB turned on for our standard brush so we can start painting. We'll choose, we'll choose just a gray, mid-gray value, and we can start painting on here. So you can say the, see the default behavior is just to paint over that. I can drop the RGB intensity down and that'll paint less intensity. You can also go over here underneath brush, there's alpha and texture, and in here there's a poly paint mode. If you hover over that, you're gonna see one is standard, two is colorized, three is multiply, four lighten, five darken. Those are like Photoshop brush modes or layer modes. So if we change this to colorize, we switch this to two and we do our mid gray and we just crank our RGB intensity up to 100. You're gonna see how that behaves differently now. 
if we go over here to 3, which is multiply, now those values are being multiplied, lighten, and darken. And of course number one is just, you know, standard brush mode. And there's another option I want to talk about that's not RGB specific, you can use it as a sculpt, but if you go over here to your alpha menu, and underneath modify here, you're going to see there's a strength value, or I'm sorry, a streak value. If we plug in an alpha, so for our standard brush here, let's go ahead and plug in a square alpha here. If we cr increase the streak length, you're going to see we're getting this. So as, we, as we're passing through, it's going to kind of streak our brush strokes. We can change the density to increase the density here. You can increase the intensity of your streaks, your strength, your fall off. So between these values here, you can kind of dial in how much streaking you want as you brush, and it kind of give you a brush stroke kind of feel. And like I mentioned before, if we grab a Sphere 3D and then we make it a poly mesh, let's go back to our matte cap gray. And we'll choose a white color. We'll subdivide a couple times. And so you can still use this for sculpting. Let's switch over to Z add. Let's crank that intensity up a little bit. And let's uh, increase our strength length and let's drop our density down a bit. And you can see as we're brushing with this stroke, it's kind of giving us a streaky value. Let's go ahead and subdivide this a few more times. And you can also turn on RGB and you can do both of this at once. If you want to kind of paint blue streaks on your object here, you can kind of dial in that look you're going for. And of course, if you don't, don't want to do any Z intensity, just turn off Z add. And now you're basically just going to paint with kind of streaky brush strokes. And in ZBrush 2020, there's a new functionality here. So if we're painting on our object, so I'm going to go in here to the RGB. I'll start, uh, let's go color fill. Let me change my color a little bit. So if you're in here and you're painting and you're also sculpting at the same time, sometimes it would be kind of difficult to tell if I could switch over to uh, my clay brush. With poly paint on there, it's kind of hard to see what exactly you're sculpting. It, it can get a little bit confusing. And in the old days, what you had to do is go in here to subtool. You can turn off your poly paint, switch back to a white color. So you can just toggle your poly paint off while you're sculpting. Of course, you're going to want to be careful because if you're ever out of this mode and you happen to go into ZBrush, uh, go into Geometry, and Dynamesh, you'll actually lose your poly paint. So if I go back here and turn Colorize on, my poly paint's completely gone. So you got to be careful with that. And another thing you might try and do is you go in here to like Texture. Let's go ahead and grab this texture here. And we'll say Edit Spotlight. We'll turn this down. And we'll just go ahead and paint this RGB texture on here. And let's say, you know what, I want to use this as a guide. So I'm going to go in here with my standard brush and with RG or Z add on only. And you know what, we'll go in here to stroke and we'll crank that lazy radius up. So I want to put a kind of a lazy radius stroke on here, but it's kind of hard to tell. Like, am I, am I sculpting the same amount? Because whenever it gets dark, it's hard to see. Uh, again, instead of going in here and turning this off temporarily, or what you used to have to do is go into RGB, turn that RGB intensity down, white color, color fill object. You can kind of dumb it down a little bit. Now you can kind of see, and then you can go through here and start um, sculpting. And now you can see the texture and sculpt at the same time. So you can make a little bit of better uh, decisions maybe. But that's destructive. You've, you've kind of lost your poly paint or you've dumbed it down. You can't really get that back. Uh, I guess you could history recall that back if you wanted to, but there's a better option. So I'm gonna undo all that. So here's our poly paint on there. So I'm going to go over to the render menu over here and there is a fade opacity now. So you can actually fade the opacity completely out or you can just drop it back just a little bit, go through here and it'll make it a little bit easier to tell like where exactly you want to kind of sculpt like right in here. And then if you need to, you can go ahead and fade that opacity back. Uh, you can also go in here and you can like hold down control. And you're going to see, if I go through here and I can hold down control and I start masking, fade opacity is actually going to fade your mask as well. So just something to keep track of. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of uh, functionality in being able to quickly and effectively fade out your opacity of your poly paint and then just bring it back.